It has been a while, but we're finally seeing some rain. How long it's going to last and what it means for your weekend plans. And toll rolls in Michigan. What's now the table that's pushing the idea one step closer to reality? Plus, summer tourism is taking a hit because of the pandemic. How you can help the industry without traveling too far from home. It's 630 and you're up with 13. You're watching 13 on your side. Good morning, West Michigan. I'm James. Meredith has the morning off. Thank you so much for staying up with us. West Michigan, though, waking up to some much needed rain. You can see this, the radar, as the rain's moving through West Michigan. But over here, you see part of 196. Big thank you to our photographer, Eric, who's out there in the rain getting these shots for us. We got to get Eric some Stroop waffles or some Timbits for sticking it out in the rain. But first, we're going to go out to meteorologist Michael Barons for a check of your first forecast. Michael. Police in Kalamazoo are looking for a woman who's been missing for over a month. Alanda Gaines was last seen June 1st. She was last known to be staying at the Motel 6 on Varnick Drive in Kalamazoo. She stands around 5 foot 4, 130 pounds. She also has a tattoo on her neck that says low key. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Kalamazoo police or silent observer. Governor Gretchen Whitmer made several announcements during her COVID-19 press conference yesterday. The first, the governor is considering penalties for people who don't wear face masks. This comes after several days of increasing cases. Michigan's chief medical officer says the Grand Rapids region has the highest infection rate in the state. It includes several West Michigan counties, including Kent, Ottawa and Muskegon. The governor is also mandating bias training for all health care workers. This is in an effort to address the pandemic's disproportionate impact on people of color. Now here's a look at the latest numbers. About 450 cases were reported yesterday. Statewide, more than 67,000 people have contracted the virus. Also, nine more people have lost their lives, bringing that total to more than 6,000. Dr. Janae Caldoun did note hospitalization and death rates have not increased, but says those numbers tend to spike several weeks after cases are identified. Now you may be noticing that huge spike there on July 7th. 30 deaths were reported on that day, but 20 of them were found after a vital records review. Meanwhile, coronavirus cases are rising in more than half of the country, California, Florida and Texas, all seeing record numbers of new cases And Arizona is now being considered the world's most active hotspot with nearly one in three people testing positive positive. In Phoenix. You can see this image right here of cars being seen for miles with people waiting in line to get tested. The nation's top infectious disease expert says some states with severe outbreaks may have reopened too quickly and should shut down. At a time when health officials are warning against large gatherings, President Trump is set to host another rally this weekend, this time an outdoor event in New Hampshire on Saturday. Health officials do say outdoor events are less risky and the Trump campaign says they will be handing out masks and encouraging people to wear them. This rally is also three weeks after his Tulsa event, which health experts say could be linked to a recent surge in cases there. Michigan is moving one step closer to having toll roads. Governor Whitmer signed a bill to allow the state to look into that possibility. Other than a few bridges, Michigan is relatively toll free, but more than 30 other states currently have tolls on their highways. There's also federal barriers that say you cannot add tolls to existing roads. But there are a few exceptions. For example, if more lanes were added to I-96. But experts say tolling can create problems like public backlash and traffic issues. Hopefully Tom can hear us right now. We'll work on getting that fixed. But Tom, we're going to start with nutrition. Now, let's just say if I train really hard, let's say workouts twice a day. Can I be a bit lax with my diet or what I'm eating since I'm working out harder? Uh, the, the best approach to that is you cannot out-train a bad diet. So no matter how hard you work, the calorie still counts, meaning that if you're consuming more calories than you're burning off through your daily activities as well as your exercise, you're not going to lose that, that stubborn body fat. You're not going to be able to lose weight. Uh, your diet has to be on point, and then your exercise just complements that to, to help uh, produce even better results. Now, Tom, let's uh, move along to something a lot of folks focus on getting rid of. Let's say someone wants to shed a few pounds around the midsection, but can they just do a bunch of sit-ups and crunches to lose fat in that area there? 
so that that's known as spot reduction. That is a myth. Uh, the amount of repetitions that it would take would be insane, but the myth comes from knowing that muscle burns fat. So having muscle increases your metabolism. So the problem is it doesn't work in specific areas. The best bet is to do your strength training, gain as much muscle as you can to help burn fat all over your body because that's how fat comes off. It doesn't come off from one specific area that's been exercised. Good to know. Now, Tom, last but not least, this is something we hear quite often. What do you say to those who think, if I begin lifting weights, it'll make me bulky? Uh, it's been a trend uh, that's, that's actually reducing over the, the years, which is really, is really hopeful for us as a strength training community. Um, but it comes down to genetics and nutrition again as well. Lifting weights won't simply make you bulky. If you're predisposed genetically to, to have a lot of muscle on your body, yeah, you might gain some, but also you have to be eating enough food, which is quite a bit. Muscle's hard to gain for a lot of people. Uh, you have to be eating enough food to actually put on that muscle mass. It's not an easy task. So adding in weight training, even some heavy weights, is not going to make most people bulky. In fact, it's just going to make them look even better and feel better about themselves being strong. I'll tell you what, having you every Friday makes me feel better. Tom, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Jane. 13 on your side. Good morning, West Michigan. Thank you so much for getting up with us on this Friday, July 10th. It is still a little dark and early. I'm James. Meredith has the day off. So does meteorologist Laura Hartman. But were we not, this morning I'm joined by meteorologist Michael Behrens. And Michael, you can still kind of hear the rain coming down outside here in Walker. When will folks actually see these storms move out? As the temperatures calm down a bit, you may want to get out on the lake. However, we're on your side this morning with the warning about the recent rise in drownings. This week, forecasters say the deadly four W's, warm wind waves weekend. They're all in play. Winds equal waves, waves equal dangerous currents, and of course, warm weekends equal an increased amount of beachgoers. So remember, if you're planning a day at the beach, representatives from the Great Lakes Surf Rescue Project are reminding you to wear life jackets that fit. Make sure the entire family has one on. Flotation is the, the difference between life and death in a drowning situation. As the coronavirus continues to spread across West Michigan, Dr. Janae Caldoun, Michigan's chief medical officer, says the Grand Rapids region has the highest rate of infection in the state. On average, we're seeing more than 45 cases per million people per day. On Thursday, the state reported nearly 450 new cases. More than 100 of those are right here in Kent County. In Ottawa County, we are seeing an uptick in cases as well at the beginning of the week. Marked by that red arrow you see right there, we started off with a total number of just six new cases. And Thursday, we saw that number rise to 22. Now, while this is down from yesterday's report, it's still an increase. Then in Muskegon County, we're seeing increases as well with this week's highest daily case count marked by that same red uh, arrow right there on Wednesday. Daily cases got up to 10. Now coming up in our next half hour, we're going to take a deeper look into the statewide coronavirus statistics. As cases rise across our state, officials could soon increase their mask compliance. Right now, the law requires anyone in enclosed public spaces to wear a mask, but whether that's enforced or not is up to local law enforcement. In the future, Governor Whitmer says those who don't comply with mask laws could be hit with fines. However, she did stress dishing out penalties is the last thing she wants to do. Work advocacy groups are accusing meat processing companies Tyson and J JBS of racial discrimination. Both companies have plants right here in West Michigan. The suit alleges in March when COVID-19 infections were first reported in meatpacking plants, at least 3,200 people became infected. And according to the CDC, 87% of those confirmed cases are from people of color, despite them only making up 61% of the worker population. The, compl the complaint asks that the companies be made to remedy that the discrimination or lose their federal funding. Back in April, we did report 60 employees from Allegan County's JBS beef production plant tested positive for COVID-19. COVID-19 is causing a dramatic increase in the need for food assistance here in West Michigan. A growing number of families who never needed help before now must rely on food banks. And you can help. That's coming up. Time right now is 612. You're up with 13. 
Welcome back. The pandemic has put a financial strain on many families, which is why the role played by food pantries has become even more important over the last few months. The Community Action House in Holland completely switched its model in order to connect its clients with their needs. And as 13 on your sides, Emma Nichols reports many people are using these services for the first time. Following your timeline this morning, the search continues for actress Naya Rivera presumed dead after a suspected accident on California Lake. Surveillance video shows the moments Rivera arrived at the lake with her four year old son. She then boarded a rented pontoon boat before setting out. When she did not return to the dock, workers searched the lake, finding that boat with her four year old son sleeping on board. Rivera is best known for her star role as Santana Lopez on the show Glee. She was just 33 years old. And it's the end of an era that housed both the Bad Boys and Bad Boys 2, provided a stage for Michael Jackson and was the scene of one of the worst moments in NBA history. But this weekend, that house will be torn down. It's that the Detroit Pistons have just shocked the Los Angeles Lakers. That was the last time the Palace of Auburn Hills celebrated a championship 2004 when the Pistons beat the Lakers. WXYZ in Detroit reports that tomorrow at 8 a.m. the Palace will be imploded. The property is expected to be developed into mixed-use office parks.